we're going to be talking about writing the equation of quadratics, quadratics given key features. Uh, most of my examples are going to be word problems, and then I'm going to give you a problem to try. You should pause the video and work on that problem, and then unpause it and check your work with mine. So the graph shows the parabolic path of a performer who was shot out of a cannon, where y is the height in feet, and x is the horizontal distance traveled in feet. Write an equation of the parabola. The performer lands in a net 60 feet from the cannon. What is the height of the net to the nearest foot? And you can see in the graph, the net's not on the ground. It looks like it's about 10 feet if we uh, look at it right there. Uh, we're given two pieces of information as well. We're given the y-intercept, 0, 20. What does that mean? That's his starting point. Is he starting on the ground? No. He's starting 20 feet above the ground. And then he reaches a maximum height of 30 feet off the ground when he is 25 feet from his starting point. And then he hits a net 60 feet away from that starting point as well. So we're going to write down our important information. I have some steps written over here and we'll finish those a little bit later. Identify the key information. So the key information here is our vertex. That's 25, 30. And we have a y-intercept, another point of 0, 20. Now, if I'm given the vertex, it should make sense to me that I should probably use vertex form. And vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. And remember that our vertex is h and k, so we're going to plug those in first. y equals a times x minus 25. That's my h squared plus 30. Now I still have three unknown variables, and that's the reason why we're given a point. We're given this point as x comma y. So I can plug in 0 for x and 20 for y. 20 equals a times 0 minus 25 squared plus 30. And then I can solve for a to get the uh, vertical stretch factor of this equation or shrink factor. So let's finish solving this. Uh, 20 equals a times negative 25 squared plus 30. Um, 20, negative 25 squared is 625 times a plus 30 equals the 20 minus 30 from both sides and we get negative 10 equals 625a and then we're going to divide by 625 so I'm going to come over here and I get a equals so a equals, I plug that into my calculator, negative 10 divided by 625 negative 0.016 so what is the equation of this parabola? y equals negative 0 0.016 times x minus 25 squared plus 30. So all I did was leave my x and y out because when I write equations I have an x and a y in the function and there's the equation of our uh, human cannonball. Now the next question asks us what's the height of the net to the nearest foot, so we can plug in 60 to the equation to find that exact value. I'll move some of this up for us for a second, so we have room to work. I get y equals negative 0 0.016 times 60 minus 25 squared plus 30. And then let's do some of this in the calculator. Negative 0 0.016 times 60 minus 25 is 35. That's 35 squared plus 30. 35 squared is 1225. So negative 0 0.016 times 1225 plus 30. Remembering my order of operations. Now I'm going to multiply by point. 0, 0.016 negative, so I get negative 19.6 plus 30, and
and I get y equals 10.4 feet. So the net is approximately, to the nearest foot, it is 10 feet above the ground. Um, and we can see on the graph here that that looks about right. So now let's go back and talk about the steps here. Move some of this out of the way. Um, so after I identified the key information given, I chose the correct quadratic function because I had the vertex. It makes sense to use vertex form. So 3 is plug in the key information and the point given. The point given goes in for x and y. So let's put that in there. Remember vertex is h, k, intercepts are p and q. And then we're going to solve for solve for a, and then we're going to write the equation as a function of x. And so that basically means we're going to write the equation with x and y as our variables, or f of x and x as our variables. You never plug those numbers, x comma y, back in to write the equation of the function. You want to be able to use it to plug in any other number you have. Okay, so here's a problem. A little bit less context. Write the equation of a problem that passes through the point negative 1 comma 2 and has a vertex of 4 comma 9. At this point, you need to pause this video, do the problem, then when you are done with that problem, you need to unpause it and then watch how I do it to see if you got the same answer. So you're pausing right now because I'm going to start. So what information am I given? My vertex is 4, negative 9. And I have the point negative 1, comma 2. This is my x, comma y, and my vertex is my h, comma My vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So first I'm going to plug in my vertex, a times x minus 4 squared plus k, negative 9, or minus 9, however you want to do that. Now I'm going to plug in my x and y. y is 2. 2 equals a times x is negative 1. Negative 1 minus 4 squared minus 9. Use my order of operations. Parentheses first. There's something to do inside the parentheses, so that's negative 5 squared minus 9. And that's negative 25a. Notice that I'm writing the a after the number, because that's generally how we write it. I find students that write the a first get confused as to what to do after that. So I'm going to write negative, or not negative, it's positive 25a equals the 2. Now I'm going to add 9 to both sides and I get 11 equals 25a and the a is being multiplied by 25 so I divide by 25. So I'm going to leave it as a fraction. a is equal to 11 25ths and then I'll write my equation as a function of x. So let's write f of x. Function of x or y, it's up to you. Uh, 11 over 25, x minus 4 squared minus 9. And just as a side note, how would you describe that transformation from the parent graph? This is right 4 with a vertical shrink, factor of 11 over 25, because it's less than 1, and a trans vertical translation down 9. So here's our next problem. The meteoro meteorologist creates a parabola to predict the temperature the day after tomorrow, where x is the number of hours after midnight, y is the temperature in degrees Celsius. Write a function f that models the temperature over time. What is the coldest temperature? So write a function. What information am I given looking at this graph? I have a point, 
That happens to be my y-intercept, and I have two other points. Now, back in chapter 3, we wrote the equation of a parabola given three points, but uh, that's a little more work than we want to do on this problem. Because we're given the x-intercepts, we can use intercept form. And our x-intercepts are 6, 0, and 21, 0. And our point is 0, 6.3. It happens to be our y-intercept, but it doesn't have to be our y-intercept. So when I write my intercept form, y is a times x minus p, x minus q. It's important to take the time to write the equation. Remember that these numbers are p and q, and so when I put it in, it's x minus 6 and x minus 21. And that's a equals the y. Now I can put my 6.3 in for y equals a times 0 minus 6 times 0 minus 21. 6.3 equals, let's use our order of operations, which says do what's inside the parentheses, negative 6 times negative 21. And 6 times 21 is 126. So positive 126a equals 6.3. And divide by 126. And 6.3 divided by 126 is 0.05. So a is 0 0.05. So our function f of x equals 0 0.05 times x minus 6, x minus 21. Now it asks for what is the coldest temperature. Coldest means minimum. Minimum means vertex. So let's find where the vertex is, where it's halfway between 16 and 12. I'm sorry, 16 and 21. 21 plus 6 divided by 2 is 13.5. because so that's 27 divided by 2. And how do I find what the actual temperature is? I can plug that into my equation. So let's move some of this up. We got, there we go. We can plug it in, f of 13.5, this is our function when x is 13.5 is equal to 0.05 times 13.5 minus 6 times 13.5 minus 21. Now again, use order of operations, not FOIL, it's much simpler on you. 13.5 minus 6 is 7.5 times 0 0.05 times 13.5 minus 21 is negative 7.5 and 7 negative 7.5 times 7.5 times 0 0.05 is negative 2.81 So that looks about right if you look at this graph. Um, it's counting by twos. You can see that because uh, the y-axis the y here goes 2, 4. So it's a little bit more than 2, a little bit less than halfway. So negative 2.8 looks about right. So the temperature is approximately negative 2.81 degrees. That was the coldest temperature. And in the equation, the problem asks us one more thing. What is the average rate of change on the interval in which the temperature is increasing um, and decreasing? And this is something we haven't looked at before, but what we do know is we have this vertex point here. An average rate of change is actually looking for the slope if, of the line you connect. So um, if this is 13.5, comma negative 2.81, we're actually going to find the decreasing slope that connects these two points for the decreasing average rate of change, and then we'll find the slope that connects those two points at that average rate of change. Um, so first look at the rate of change here. We have y2 minus y1, negative 2.82 minus 6.3, finding the slope. 
divided by x2 minus x1. I started with the vertex points, so I'm going to use that first, 13.5 minus 0, which is, oh, it's not 8.2, it's 8.1, 2.82, negative 2.82 minus 6.3 is 9.12 over 13.5 gives me an average rate of change of 0.676. For the decreasing, it's negative, because that's negative. And then the other point is not really telling if this is 21. This has got to be 24. So in order to find this rate of change, I have to actually plug in 24 to find that end point, um, that 24-hour period. That makes sense. So I'm going to plug in 0 0.05 times 24 uh, minus 6 times 24 minus 21, and that is 0 0.05 times 18 times 3. Do that on my calculator. Gives me 2.7. So it's 2.7 degrees 24 hours later. And that point is 24,2.7. And my other point is my vertex 13.5 and negative 2.81. So my slope formula, negative 2.81 minus 2.7 over 13.5 minus 24. So we get negative 2.81 minus 2.7 is negative 5.51 divided by 13.5 minus 24 is 10.5 and 5.51 negative 5.51 divided by negative 10.5 is positive 0.525. So my average rate of change as the temperature is increasing is positive 0.525. And my average rate of change as it's decreasing is negative 6.67. We have to talk about average rate of change over that time period because a parabola doesn't have slope. There's a different slope at every single point. Okay, so... Here's your problem. Pause and try this. Write the equation of the parabola that passes through the point 2, comma 5 and has x-intercepts negative 2 and 4. So again, a simplified problem with no real context. We're just finding the equation. Again, if you're given x-intercepts, we should be using intercept form. So you should be pausing it before you watch this. So we get our x-intercepts. Write down our important information, negative 2, 0, and 4, 0. And our point is 2, comma 5. In this case, it's not our y-intercept, and that's okay. So our general form of an intercept equation, y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. Plug it in, y equals a times x minus negative 2. Minus negative becomes plus, and x minus 4. Then I'll plug in my point x, y, 5 for x, a times 2 plus 2, 2 minus 4, 5 equals a times 4, times negative 2, that's negative 8a, equals 5. Now we're multiplying. Remember, this is all multiplied. So divide by negative 8. And a is negative 5 eighths. So my equation as f of x equals negative 5 eighths x plus 2 x minus 4. And if you wanted to multiply that out, you could to put it in standard form. Okay, in the last set of examples, um, 
A former NASA employee designs a model airplane that flies in a parabolic path. The table shows the heights h and feet of a plane t seconds after starting the flight path. Write and evaluate a function to approximate the height of the model airplane after 6.5 seconds. So the first thing is write the function, and then we'll evaluate it after 6.5 seconds. But we're given this table of information. We have to determine what type of equation it is. What we know about equations is if there's a constant difference, if the first cost difference is constant, then the equation is going to be um, uh, linear. So let's look at that. What is 9.1 or 20.4 minus 19.1? We'll multiply or subtract the second minus the first. We get 1.3, and then we'll do 19.9 minus 20.4 and we get negative 0 0.5 and then we'll do 17.6 minus 19.9 we get 2 point or negative 2.3 and then the last one 13.5 minus 17.6. Now these differences have to be when the x values are increasing at the same interval as well. So we see that we don't have a constant difference here. Now let's, so this is our first difference. If this first difference is the same all the way through, it's constant, then it's linear. But that's not our case. So let's look at our second differences. Negative 0.05, sorry, negative 0.5, minus 1.3 is negative 1.8. Then negative 2.3 minus negative 0.5 is negative 1.8. And negative 4.1 minus negative 2.3, those minus negatives become really important there, negative 1.8. So because my second difference is constant, we know that this is going to be quadratic. And this is one of those amazing problems that we loved from chapter three where we have three points and we're going to use system of three equations to write the parabola. So we'll use the equation, the points one comma 9.1 and two comma 20.4 and three comma 19.9 and we start if it's we have three points we don't have a vertex we don't have intercepts all we can do is use standard form a x squared plus b x plus c and my first point is 19.1 equals a times 1 squared plus b times 1 plus c my second equation is 20.4 equals a times 2 squared plus b times 2 plus c. And my last equation is 19.9 equals a times 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. And we'll simplify these. 19.1 equals a plus b plus c. 20.4 equals 2 squared is 4, so 4a plus 2b plus c. And 19.9 equals 3 squared, which is 9a plus 3b plus c. This is a, this is a c. Okay, and we're going to use that to solve the system of equations. So I'm going to rewrite them, 19.1 equals a plus b plus c. I'm going to multiply this by negative, negative 19.1 equals negative a minus b minus c, because all of those equations have a plus c at the end. So if I make one equation with a minus c, the system of equations won't be too bad. So we had 4a plus 2b plus c. And then 19.9 equals 9a plus 3b plus c. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the negative equation to the second equation. 20.4 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. We'll eliminate c here. 
So I get point, uh, let's say 20.4 minus 19.1 is 1.3. So 1.3 equals 3A plus B. Then I'm going to take this third equation and add it also to A or negative A minus B minus C. So I get point 0.8 equals 8a plus 2b, and the c's cancel. Now, let's get rid of my b's. I'll multiply this equation by a... Oh, sorry, that's not the one I want to multiply. Let's multiply this one by a negative 2. And 1.3 times negative 2 is 2.6. So negative 2.6 equals 6a minus 2b negative 6a and then we'll bring this equation over point 0.8 equals 8a plus 2b my b's eliminate I get 2a equals what's negative 2.6 minus point 0.8 is negative uh, no, we're, we're adding negative 2.6 plus 0.8, negative 1.8 divided by 2. So A is negative 0.9. So now I know A, and I can find B by plugging that in to the this equation. 1.3 equals 3A plus B. So 1.3 equals 3. 3 times negative 0.9 plus b, that's 1.3 equals negative 2.7 plus b, add 2.7 plus 2.7, oops, I accidentally changed my color there, and we get 4 equals b. That turned out to be a nice easy number. And then we know that 19.1, the very first equation I'm going back to, equals a negative 0.9 plus b, 4 plus c. So 19.1 equals 3.1 plus c minus 3.1, and c equals 16. So now I can write my equation. Let's move up all this work so we can write our equation y equals negative 0.9x squared plus 4x plus 16. Then it asks us how high in the air is the rocket 6.5 seconds after it's launched. So we're going to plug in 6.5 seconds, negative 0.9 times 6.5 squared plus 4 times 6.5 plus 16. So we get 6.5 squared has to be done first, and that is 42, so negative 0 0.9 times 42.25 plus 4 times 6.5 is 26 plus 16, and 42.25 times negative 0.9 is negative 38.025 plus 26 plus 16 is 3.975 so approximately four uh, feet off the ground after six points uh, five seconds okay And here is a problem for you to pause and try. Write the equation of the problem that passes through these three points. Negative 1, 4, 0, 1, and 2, 7. So we're pausing right now. We're writing all the information in standard form, plugging in our x's and our y's. And then the easiest way to do these, because c always has a coefficient of 1, is to first eliminate your c. So pause it. Okay. Now we're back. You've already done the problem. Let's look at our information. ax squared plus bx plus c. 
So I get 4 equals a times negative 1 squared plus b times negative 1 plus c. Okay, now let me next equation is 1 equals a times 0 squared plus b times 0 plus c. Well, this information is going to be fruitful. This tells me c is equal to 1. Then I can plug in 7 equals a times 2 squared plus b times 2 squared, or 2, plus c. So let's rewrite those. 4 equals a minus b plus c. And 7 equals 4a plus 2b plus c. Now I also know, because of my y-intercept, that c is equal to 1. So let's plug that in and make our life a little bit easier. a minus b plus 1. So subtract 1. So 3 equals a minus b. And then 7 equals 4a plus 2b plus 1. Subtract the 1. So 6 equals 4a plus 2b. So I'll do this equation by 2. 6 equals 2a minus 2b, and 6 equals 4a plus 2b, so 12 equals 6a, a is equal to 2. And if a is equal to 2, we know, move some of this up, so a is equal to 2, 3 equals 2 minus b, minus 2, 1 is equal to negative b, so b equals negative 1. So your equation, y equals a is 2, 2x squared, plus b, which is negative 1. So minus b plus, oh, sorry, uh, minus x. I don't know what just happened there. Negative 1 is your b, so negative 1 times x plus your c, which is 1. And there's the equation.